What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another edition of Contesting the Point. I'm your host, Malik Forte, and I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm, I'm going a little stir crazy here in quarantine. So I'm super happy to be talking about some Call of Duty League, which is back this weekend. And on the show today, we got Nameless and Momo back in the building. How are you guys holding up? I'm feeling great, man. Excited to be back on the show. I'm thriving in quarantine now. I've just been grinding Call of Duty and watching everybody play and scrim. It's been a great time. Yeah, I'm the same. I've been playing and watching more COD than ever, uh, if I'm being honest. But maybe uh, talking about it, I'll, uh, I'll win some more contesting the points. But excited to be uh, jumping on another episode. Hopefully I can get my second win. Uh, I, w- I think I'm one and three. My results haven't been great, Malik. <laughs> well, but you're, you made some good predictions, though. I have to give you that. I have to give you that. Uh, oh, everything I say is spot on. You, you, you just don't believe me, and you choose the other person. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Phil. I don't know. If that <laughs> <laughs> shush, shush. <laughs> You've been close. You've been close. But guys, uh, for those who have not gotten a chance to check out the show, let me give them the rules real quick. So what's going to happen is I'm going to present a headline from the CDL. I'm then going to give my hot take on the story. One of the guests will defend the hot take while the other attacks it. I'll award points for convincing arguments. And after three stories, whoever has the most points wins 60 seconds to pop off in our Astro Listen Up moment. You guys cool with that? That's right. Sounds good to me. All right. Kicking things off. We had arguably our biggest roster move of the season with the Chicago Huntsmen cashing in on Pristini from the Florida Mutineers. Uh, Pristini will be joining his brother Arxides on the Huntsman and taking the starting spot previously held by Gunless. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I think this was a little bit extreme and a little bit premature. Uh, Gunless, he was huge for Chicago early on. So they hit a slump and now they just go ahead and make this big roster move out of nowhere. They just change things up. I don't know about this, guy. So with this in mind, my hot take is that Chicago's roster move is just way too early momo you seem to be on board with this move though tell me why Uh, i am and i think uh it's been coming for a long time if i'm being honest chicago are one of those teams which i feel should and will always be going for number one they are certainly a few steps behind number one and number two at this moment in time and gunless for me is a great individual i don't think it's his skill or his talent or whatever it may be, but something's not working with these five players and this team. So, they've got top four, three events in a row. Good for some, okay for others, but it's not good enough for the Huntsman. Uh, The losses have come to, you know, the likes of Dallas, New York, Florida. It, It doesn't really matter who they're losing against. These guys are going for championships. And one thing that I will say as well is how important, of course, these spots are. We all know by the end of the CDL, you know, finishing at the top is going to be crucial. And they're starting to fall behind. Changes needed to be made. And they were almost willing. We've all seen it in scrims. General was going to be stepping in. And a lot of people were kind of loving the the new look and the new vibe. But when you have an opportunity to grab someone like Prestini, who has seen such success with the likes of Arsties, his twin brother, whether it's last year winning the playoffs, last year winning champs, this is a world champion in his own rights. That's something I think you've just got to grab. You've got to steal it. You've just got to go for it. I don't think it's too early. I don't think... I don't think Huntsman and a team that are okay sitting at third and fourth and going out at semifinals. Um, for that reason, I think they did the right thing, acting as quick as they did, making this big roster move. Uh, and I think they'll see success from it. So you don't think it was a little bit premature and you're on board with this completely? Uh, it was about time. I think it, it was, was about, about time. time. They, they uh, go into another one and they finish uh, another top three, top four, like third, fourth position. Again, they just start falling down these rankings. Nameless, do you think that this could potentially mess up the chemistry that the Chicago Huntsman already had? Uh, yes, I do. And I'm going to defend this statement because I believe that their roster change was a bit too early. They got first and then they got top four, top four, top four. They've only lost to one team on land. That's the Florida Mutineers. One team on land, a bad matchup. You get rid of Gunless, Big P, Pierce we're talking about, the multi-time MVP, the guy that could single-handedly win you games, the guy who at end of games will get better. He will continuously progress. He puts his heart and soul into the game. He plays as much or more than any other player in the game and he is extremely passionate. I don't agree with this move whatsoever. I thought that they were absolutely fine. Every great team is gonna have 
you know, a month or so where they they have some hiccups. You're not going to be flawless throughout. And they've shown all the other top teams, whether it be Empire, FaZe, or whoever else, that this team crumbles under pressure and they will end up making a change, right? Like, this is what people predicted going into the season with, with Gunless. Gunless had formed a team before. They've always wanted to play together. And then, gun, and then there's some sort of turmoil or issue. And then they have to part ways. Everybody said it was going to happen, that it was a ticking time bomb. And they said, no, 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 no. We're going to be fine. We're going to be great. And they were. They were just that. And in the midst of their greatness, they decide to get rid of him and prove all the fans and all the naysayers sayers right and what they said pre previous to the start of the season i think that that shows weakness that doesn't show tenacity and i think that this can make the team a lot worse now prasini is a great player it wouldn't be at the hands of him but he's coming into a team that has shown their weakness to these other rosters these guys are going to be confident against them going up against a team without gunless i think it was way too early i think they should have waited it out and i don't like it whatsoever i feel like there was a lot in there to kind of keep me on my hot take and conv not convince me otherwise that this is way too early. Momo, is there anything else you want to add, man? Because right now I'm kind of leaning toward what Nameless just said. I, I can see why, and I can see, obviously, the points for both. And honestly, I, I agree with some of the stuff Nameless is saying about, you know, proving all the naysayers wrong. Being the third best team is great for a lot of teams, and a lot of teams would dream for that. The Huntsman will not be happy with anything but first, and I think a change was needed to get to that first spot. Gunless is great. They could have continued. He would have got better. Maybe they would have gelled, but I didn't see them retaking that number one spot. They were falling behind. And this slow lump that's been going on or this third fourth kind of position this has been since february you know yes they've only lost one on lan but I, I, the rest of the season isn't on lan you know it's uh it's going to be a tough one but can i go ahead name statement. Us. yeah because you have skump formal rcd's envoy and gunless on your team you don't need to make a roster change for more talent like just figure it out you have some of the best players of all time on your roster Figure it out. Don't show weakness. Get through it and get better. I just, I, I just, I've been watching, you know, this Jordan documentary and I'm just looking at this. I'm like, yo, these guys are weak, man. Tough it out. Like, I, I just, I, if I was on this roster and I had this much talent around me, or if I was a GM of this team, I would say you're sticking it out and you're going to figure it out. And that builds character in the team. So when they're in a position, you know, at champs down the line, like they turn up and they realize what they've been through and that they didn't just crack under the pressure. Yeah, you know what? I feel like with any type of competitive gaming, any type of competition, period, you have to learn how to get over the rough patches. You have to learn to to work through the slumps. And I feel like them making this move, it shows more so weakness, like Nameless said, than it shows them actually being ready to win. So with that being said, I'm going to give this round to Nameless 4-3. I just think it's way too early. I love Pristini. I think he's a great player. But, man, Gunless, he really did his thing at the beginning of the season. And I feel like if they would have just kind of waited things out, you know, worked through this slump, worked through these tough times, they would have got so much better, possibly better than they were earlier in the season. So that brings our total after the first round to Nameless with four points, Momo with three. Moving on to our next story, we're taking a look at the Seattle Home Series and the teams that are going to be there this weekend. Uh, I'm noticing two giant competitive holes in the shape of the Atlanta phase and the Dallas Empire, uh, who will both not be there. The two highest ranking teams in the CDL are not going to be at the Seattle Home Series. Instead, we have the Chicago Huntsman and the Minnesota Rocker who will be the highest ranking teams. Um, this is the only time that Minnesota will be at an event where only one of the top Three teams will be in attendance. Uh, in my mind, this is their best chance to get first place than they'll ever have for the rest of the season. And because of that, my hot take is if Minnesota does not win this event, they won't for the rest of the season. Ooh. And with that being said, that's a hot take right there, right? Uh, I like it. N nameless, man. Tell me what you think about that. <laughs> I disagree with that statement. Uh, I don't think that this is the, you know, end all for Minnesota that they have to win. I think it might be one of their best chances to win, but I don't think it's the end all. We've seen plenty of teams in the history of Call of Duty be absolutely terrible throughout the entire season and then go on to win a tournament at the end or even win champs. I think back to 2018 when Evil Geniuses, I was actually on that team. We were not great. They make some roster changes and they weren't great. And, you know, they get a second place and they look like they don't have the makings of a team that can win a championship. They go to COD champs and they they win it versus teams that were the heavy favorite. We're talking Rise. We're talking up these teams that should have beaten them. They were one map away from being like knocked out of the tournament. And who was on that team? It was Silly and Assault. And who got MVP? It was Assault. Like it's been done before. That's not the only case that this has happened. But I'm using that example because these players have been there. So I think that Minnesota can still win a tournament. 
later on in the season if they don't win this one. They have great players, and they've shown that they're a formidable team that can be in that top four discussion on a consistent basis. They have a standout star in God RX. They have the aggressor in Asim, and they have a bunch of role players who play their roles great. So they have the makings of a team that can win. It's just about getting over that hump and winning. And I think that they have a couple more events to try it out, and they also have another home series, the Minnesota home series. So until their home event's done, I don't even think that this is a discussion. So I think we hold off on this talk until after that event. Okay, so name if you feel it's a little more it's a little bit premature for me to say that Minnesota's not going to win any event and this yeah. is their end all be all, but what do you feel about that? Uh, I mean you sound already convinced against your own statement right now, you know? <laughs> the one thing I will say, Malik, is yeah. um I agree with, with some of what Ant was saying. Again, teams uh -huh. can get better. And yeah. those are some individuals which I can. I want to make so, make something very clear. Going into this uh -huh. home series, my go-to team, my one to win it all right now, isn't Huntsman. It's Rocker. But I do think this is the time for them to do it. So I am saying that they're going to win this one. However, your statement of if they don't win, they won't win um, until the very end, I do agree with. And the reason is I think this is Rocker's chance, right? We're over halfway through the season, okay? Uh, this event does not have Dallas and it does not have FaZe. The clear-cut number one and number two, the biggest hurdles. We have, I don't want to say a weakened Huntsman, but a new Huntsman. This is going to be a team which you'd like to think, being put together with three, four, five days, they will be able to beat. Now, the problem is at this point is their previous home series, Rocker fell short to the likes of Toronto and New York. You know, this is the time for them either to go big or I see them almost kind of falling down the ranks a, a little bit. Um, but let's not forget as well, we're halfway through the season. Two of the events left, they don't even attend. So we have, yes, their own home series in Minnesota, but they don't do the Paris one. They don't do New York. How many's left? They've got like this and three others. So if you're saying that if they don't win this one, they don't win one of the, the other three that they attend, I agree with you. I think this is the time to do it. I think they will do it. And I, I think that it's coming towards the end of the season. Those 50 CDL points would mean a lot to a team like Rocker. Just because it's the time to do it doesn't mean that they won't do it at the end of the season. It's happened before. Um, with teams that have been worse in the beginning, in the start of the season. So I think it's actually crazy to rule them out and say that they won't do it. I, I just think with Huntsman doing what they're doing, I think Huntsman are going to get better and better and better. I think Dallas and FaZe are a few steps ahead of these guys already. We've just seen them kind of get beat down by Toronto and New York in a home series. And they've only got, again, due to the statement, three more attempts at this. So for them to win th one of those three against FaZe and Dallas and Huntsman in the mix, even the way New York is stepping up, I, I, I do believe that if they don't win this, they don't win one this this year. So I feel sucks. like it would be what you're saying would be fair if it hadn't happened before. Uh, when this happened with Evil Geniuses in 2018, there were teams that were even more dominant than the teams we have right now. I mean, yeah, we had Rise, who was coming off of nearly a three-peat. We had Red Reserve, who was getting back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back seconds. We had teams like Optic, who were looking unreal at the time. Like, there were way more dominant squads, and they were in worse form than Rockers. So, like, I feel like what you're saying, like, would make sense if it hadn't happened in Call of Duty before, but it's happened before, and it was these guys that did it. So, like, I, I just can't for the life of me say it when you when they've done it you know what i, I mean I, I think it could happen and i think that eg is a great example and and it would make special storylines but i don't see it happening I, I i didn't see it happening for eg i think that was kind of out of nowhere um which was great and it, and it kind of created these storylines and it was these players but if you were to say to me guys uh the the seattle home series winners are puntsman for example and then you know minnesota have got three more attempts i'm thinking they're probably not going to do it. That would be my look on it. You know, I think if they don't win here, they don't win the, you know, one of those three opportunities. But crazy things have happened. COD Esports is wild. I mean, the teams that are dominant in the beginning of the season usually aren't dominant at the end of the season as well. So that's another thing to take into account with that statement. Oh, yeah. Any, anything can happen over the last couple of weeks I, and months. You, you, you're right, you know, and don't get me wrong. I want Minnesota, I probably out of every single team, to win one. They've been to so many finals, but... Maybe I'm giving up hope, Malik. Maybe this is this is me kind of saying this is the one I'm going for. And if they don't win it, maybe it's uh, maybe it's me just kind of thinking it's all over for these guys. And you know, top four semifinals, they're great. They get your CDL points, but I don't see them winning. Yeah, I mean, I think we can all agree that it can happen. 
you know, let's keep it a buck. There's always probability. But I feel like if we're going to weigh the options and, and the probabilities, I feel like it's more it's more likely that they're not going to be able to win one after this if they don't do it. I mean, just look at how they've been performing lately. And since we've gone to this online only structure, they haven't been the same Minnesota that we've seen. They dropped one at the last tournament to New York and to Toronto. That doesn't give me much confidence in Minnesota moving forward. So with that being said, I'm going to go with Momo on this one. I just don't think Minnesota can do it if they don't do it this time. They need to seize this tournament if they want to have a tournament win under their belt in the regular season. And with that, that puts our final score at the end of round two to Momo with three points, Namus with two, and our total overall for the game with you two being tied up at six apiece. For our last story, a little bit of surprising news coming out of the Florida Home Series uh, was Optic Gaming LA dropping Pac-Man. Now, this seems a little bit crazy after the Florida Home Series when you consider the performance that Optic Gaming LA had. They were performing great, the best that they have all season, making it all the way to the finals and even contending with the top dogs phase. So with that being said, and the upswing swing in performance that we've seen from OG LA, uh, my hot take is that Optic Gaming LA dropped Pac-Man way too early. And that's where I'm going to sit on that one. I think right now for this one, though, we have you, Momo, who doesn't quite agree with me on that. Can you tell me why? Uh, I mean, straight away, very hot take, I will say. Very hot very? take, okay. uh, bringing, bringing Pac-Man into it. First and foremost, I don't think it's Pac-Man. I don't think it's the person, whoever's in that role. I think Optic Gaming, they are currently signed eighth position, right? This is coming off the back of a, a pretty decent home series where they got 30 CDL points. That is more than their whole CDL 2020 put together. And we're talking that's over a span of four events. So I think this was first and foremost coming before this home series. I think this has been kind of in the making, if you like, for a, a week or two, maybe even more. Um, but these guys were sat in the bottom, bottom two, bottom three for a while. And that is not something that the Optic Gaming brand represent. They wanted change and they made, they started making change. That started with the players. Uh, they've made that, they've seen success. It sucks because I think Pac-Man is great at what he does. And I think he'll find success wherever he goes. But I think this is a time where the Optic Gaming are like, you know, this isn't good enough. We want to be up there with the Huntsman, FaZe, Dallas, and they've got to start making change. And that started with players, it's moved to management. I know other other people as well, outside of the esports, it looks like as well, um, has made change as well. But the results are not good enough for this brand. They've made improvements recently, but that is so recent, I feel that team changes, they may still happen. Is Chino the final change for Optic Game? And I, I don't think so. I think these guys may make some more changes. Um, but I think, again, going back to your hot take, which is, you know, Pac-Man is dropped too early. I think, again, it goes back to the point where over halfway through the season, Optic, again, don't play at all of these last six or last five. There's only so much time, and that time is kind of ticking out. So I think change may need it to be made. It sucked to have to be Pac-Man, but hopefully it means he can uh, he can come and join us on the desk. I guess. <laughs> I just hate that he didn't even get a, really a chance to to foster the power that Chino brought to I that know, team. You I know, know. They, they just got rid of him so quick. Well, nameless. How do you feel about it? Um. This is one of my good friends, and I completely disagree with the move that Optic, Game, Optic Gaming made. Uh, Pac-Man joined this team as a coach, um, and he didn't have any hand in creating this roster. Uh, the team's rosters are formed before games come out. You don't know what the meta is going to be like, and you don't know how those players are going to mesh. They weren't great. They didn't mesh well. You had players like TJ Halley and JCap underperforming. Um, they make they finally give Pac-Man the tools to, to make a change, or the general manager makes a change, however it goes, and they put Chino in. They immediately find a lot more success. TJ shoots up in KD. He played great in Search and Destroy. The Search and Destroy got a lot better, and you could see it in the strategy in their game. Uh, even with minor mistakes, they're one round away from you know possibly winning an event like it's just mind-blowing that they were to get rid of pac-man after their best performance and it just shows me that you know it was 
you know, probably predetermined before the tournament began. And just think about that. Your second move is to like release your coach and you don't even like pick up another play. Like, you, you put one of your subs in. It, it sounds like they haven't even tried to make trades anywhere else. And, you know, I just I dislike that move a ton because I know what Pac-Man brings to a team. I know he goes hard for them and he's he can only do what the players want him to do. Right. Like he can make sure the chemistry is on point and he's a friend and he does exactly what the players want from him. And none of the players wanted him gone whatsoever. So it's like if they don't have a hand in what's happening in the chemistry of the team, if they don't know what's happening there, how can they make that decision? Which leads me to believe that it was maybe them just downsizing due to the situation in the world right now. Um, but we don't know because we're not a part of that management decision. Um, but I wish both of them the best of luck and I hope that they both land on their feet. I just think that they should have decided to keep Pac-Man because going forward, I thought that they were improving. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but Momo, do you really think that this was like the, the optimal thing that they could have done? Like this was the next move after Chino that needed to be made. I think there were other changes by by all means. I think the one thing to take away from it is, you know, they did improve. And I think like Nameless said, again, he was maybe a factory in actually bringing Chino on. I believe so. And he obviously, you know, did make them better. I think Optic Gaming, again, there's a couple things it's them and the brand and the position that they sit they're not happy with i'd like to think and i hope that optic gaming have a replacement for pac-man by all means because if they're just releasing him to release him that isn't fixing the problem i'm almost giving them the benefit of the doubt that they're bringing someone in that's so great that they're gonna make optic gaming you know brilliant but if they're just release then they're not gonna get better by just releasing him so i i think pac-man is a great asset and i think it could have been it could have been something special but if they it needed really to make comes change, down to tough. how much influence coaches actually have on teams. Like contrary right. to what a lot of fans might believe, like coaches don't have that much influence onto a roster. Like if they're if they're not creating the team, like they can't jump in and start playing for them. Like you can, it, it's almost like being on the golf course and hitting a golf ball, right? Like you can have the perfect swing. You could be the perfect conditions outside, and that swing can be the best one you've ever had. And as soon as it hits the ball, like. You have no idea what's going to happen to that ball. Like there can be a random gust of wind that comes out of nowhere and moves it to the right. Like, and that's how coaching is. And I know for a fact that he was on point with all the preparation going into the tournaments. And if the if the management was not aware of that, you know that that's on them. But I I just know that he was on point, and the players will will to this day they'll come onto a show, they'll talk to you about, it, and they'll say he was on point. So I disagree with it completely. Yeah, you know I heard nothing but good things about Pac Man and you know his coaching regiment. Uh, it. it, it it irks me a little bit that, you know, they saw a little bit of success. Uh, there was a change made that he, you know, partly influenced that led to that success. And yet he's punished for it and, and loses his position. There's something that just does not sit right with me. And for that reason, I'm going to give this round to Nameless. I, I believe you brought up, brought up all the valid points necessary uh, to defend him in this. So our score for round three is Nameless with three points, Momo with two, which brings our total for the game to Nameless with nine and Momo with eight. And with that, Let's get it. are the winner of our Astro Listen Up moments. You got 60 seconds to pop off to the people. Let them know how you feel, man. All right, well, one, I want to say thank you to all of you guys who continuously show up and support this show. And to the people in the comments who don't like me, well, I still like you. I'm killing you guys with kindness today. Much love to all you guys because you're coming out and you're commenting. You're showing me support, whether it's hate or love. And anyways, I also want to say big shout out to my guy, Pac-Man. I hope that he lands on his feet. I know that he's an incredible asset to any anywhere that he goes. Uh, I hope he comes back to work with us in some way, Phil. I think it would be super fun. We definitely miss him, but... Also, good luck to the Optic Gaming team. I hope that they can find a suitable replacement. I feel like the only way that they can justify that is by putting J-Cap in the coaching position. And then I would be like, okay, that's fair. Um, but other than that, that's all I really have to say, man. I don't really want to talk too much crap today. Just saying I'm feeling the love, guys. I appreciate it. I love it, man. Lots of positive vibes you're sending out there, Nameless. I think uh, the people will appreciate that. I hope they do, man. I had a great time today. Appreciate you guys. All right, everybody, that does it for this episode of Contesting the Point. Thank you to Nameless and Momo for joining me once again. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you for some more CDL action this Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific. <laughs>